Hi, I'm Plexi Cosplay. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Rebound 25 to make a brush-on silicone mold. This is great for vertical surfaces and kind of anything that's not pourable. So go ahead and get your silicone and let's get started. So for this project, I have Sub-Zero's mask from the new Mortal Kombat movie. I did a resin print of this because you do need to have something that you're making a mold of and it is not a pourable mold unless I were to pull this mask into two flat pieces. So that's why I'm choosing to use Rebound 25 for this. I have a cheap mannequin head of styrofoam one, one that I'm willing to destroy. And I want to make sure that it's fitted right up against the, the styrofoam heads so that we don't have a lot of spaces for the mold making material to kind of seep into. So I'm using clay here. This is a clay that does not dry and I'm gonna put that all on the inside of the mask, fill in all of the holes, any of the open areas. There are a lot of open areas on this mask where he breathes through or there's just some just voids and pockets. We wanna fill those as completely as we can and try to seal those spaces. Again, because we don't want the silicone to seep into that and go beneath the mask, we only want a mold of the top part of the mask. So I'm doing also some clay on the outside so that we have almost like a buffer on the edge so that the mold making material doesn't just fall off the side of the piece. Instead, we have a bit of a lip there and that'll be better for whenever we have to pour the casting material into this mold whenever it's finished. So I'm just pressing it up against the styrofoam head now and I'm gonna try to make sure that I have that nice lip all the way on the edge. And again, get that good seal in any of the open pockets on the mask. Okay, so now it's time to get out our Rebound 25. I purchased a trial size kit. Um, that will be plenty for this use, and I plan to actually do one more mask with just the trial size kit. I would recommend starting with this if you've never used a product from Smooth On. Always try the trial first if you're unsure of how it's gonna turn out. I know that I love Rebound 25 though. I should have probably purchased a bigger one. Um, anyway, so this is a one-to-one -one in terms of volume, so I measure out exactly the same. Of both and I really like that they're both a different color one's pink and one is white and that way you can see if you're mixing it completely so I do measure these in separate cups and then I pour them into a single container and then you want to mix thoroughly I use just a wooden scraper or a spatula something that I can discard afterwards um, for this and I, I also will use that wooden scraper for the application process instead of a brush even though it's called a brush on mold I find that using these wooden scrapers is, is plenty and will do a really great job. Okay, so once it's mixed thoroughly, again, you can see because of the colors whether or not it's mixed, but over mix, if anything, you've got a, a pretty good amount of curing time here. Once it's mixed thoroughly, you can begin to pour. I like to slowly pour from the top um, and then make sure that you're filling in all the crevices, push it down in with your spatula. You really want to try to avoid having any air bubbles or pockets. So the more that you can take your time on this first application, the better. The first application is the one that will fill in all the pockets. So take, take your time, make sure to do it right. It has a really long cure time, which means that it will begin to run um, downwards with gravity, depending on how your item is oriented. And what I like to do is because the cure time is, I think, 15 to 20 minutes, over that time, I will also scrape any drippings, anything that's kind of going down and keep pulling it up onto the side of my item. So you can get a little bit more out of your application rather than letting it all just drip onto the floor or onto whatever mat you have it on. Go ahead and keep picking it up and putting it back on your item and um, until it hardens enough that it, it stays there for good. Okay, so this is what it looks like after my first application. You can see where I've scraped up any of the silicone that fell onto my mat and I put it back on top but it does, you can still kind of see the mask through that first layer, and that's because you don't stop after one layer. With Rebound 25, they recommend four, but if you play it cool like me and you like to pick up the silicone as it drips and keep reapplying to get the most out of it, you might be able to get away with two or three layers. I can get away with actually two layers on this. As you can see, I just like to make sure that you can't see the original item 
through the mold and that there's no open pockets or any weak points. Um, again, Smooth On recommends four. I recommend anywhere between two to four and, and you should be good. Just take your time with it and um, try to keep pulling the silicone back up onto your item to get the most out of it. So the thing about a brush on mold is that when you pull it off, it is just a floppy mold with no way to retain its shape so that you can pour something into it. Whereas a pourable mold is basically like a mat with a mold inside. So for this, you actually have to make a shell so that it has something to sit in to retain its shape while you pour whatever resins you want to to make your new item. You have to use a gauze plaster bandage. You can buy these. I'm going to put them in the link in the comments below or in the description below. I get them in bulk. All you have to do is have a cup of water on the side. You can see that I dip it in the cup of water. Try to just pull that water out. Don't leave it sopping wet, but it will be kind of a mess and then you apply it to the outside of your fully cured mold. So don't do this until it's fully cured. I usually wait an entire night before I do it. Um, and go ahead and start applying. I usually apply about three or four bandage layers onto it and then I like to smooth and smear the plaster so that it makes a nice shell. Once that's completely cured, again you're gonna have to give it several hours and just keep checking on it then you want to be very gentle with this as you slowly pull it away from the silicone. Once you have the shell pulled away from the silicone, then it's time to use the other side and begin pulling off the clay form that you have as well as the item that you made your uh, cast of. So for me, that's gonna be my resin print mask. Just take your time. You want to try not to tear the Rebound 25. It's it's pretty hefty and sturdy, but at the same time, if you have any leakage that went around any parts of your item, it could cause tears to happen as you pull it apart. So take your time, be firm, but also slow about the process. Success! Once you have your Rebound 25 mold pulled away from the material, then you have yourself a nice mold here and you can lay it gently into your shell to make sure they still match up. As you can see, it's worked out really well here for me. I'm very pleased with the way this one turned out. I'm going to do a roto cast inside of this, but uh, yeah, that's how, you, that's how you do it. So I hope your mold turned out amazing. I went ahead and poured my impression already. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Share it where you can. And I will see you next Tuesday for Tutorial Tuesday. Thanks again.